Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lay Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners. Today, we're bringing a little bit of class to the workshop. We're gonna make a bow tie. Now, before you start hating me and say, I can make that on the bandsaw, make it on the lathe is a lot more fun. Takes a little bit longer, but it's still a lot more fun because when you're turning, you're learning and having fun, and I like that. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna make a two-piece bow tie. So we're using some uh, quilted maple, which I lost the quilt in here somewhere, and then we're gonna be using some purple heart here to make the center. And it's a really neat project because it's all about the technique and some cool things that we can do on the lathe that we haven't really done before. So I'm starting off with this nice little board. And you can see I've got quilting on here. For some reason, when I did the last two ties, none of that came out. Or actually, it all went out. It didn't come out in the, the bow tie. That's what my problem was. So anyway, what I want to do is I want to grab a ruler, and we're going to make a 7-inch by 3-inch square that we're going to cut out Square? That'd be a rectangle, wouldn't it? That we're going to cut out on the bandsaw. So it just so happens that my ruler here that I made is actually seven inches by three inches. So that makes life a lot easier. So let's go ahead and make a mark here, make a mark here, and there we go. So now we've got our seven inch blank. Let me just go ahead and finish this line here so I know it'll go straight across. So we're going to go to the bandsaw and cut that out. Get my eyeball protection on. Turn on the bandsaw and run her through. I learned uh, the other day when you're cutting acrylics and plastics and other things on your bandsaw, you tend to eat up your blades. And I just got a new set of Timberwolf blades and I gotta admit, it's like butter again. So it's always important to make sure you keep your bandsaw blade sharp because if they're not, it becomes a more dangerous machine. This way, I'm not having to push hard at all. The wood just flows right through nicely, smoothly, and safely. And now bow ties come in a lot of shapes and sizes. So I went online and just looked for some free clip art on bow tie shapes. And I kind of like this one. It did what I wanted. However, what I did when I printed it out, I made three different sizes. And if I can pick this one up, this is the size I actually decided on. It's four and three quarters inches long. This one is five inches and this is five and a half. So you can see you get pretty large. I want to stay a little bit small because actually if you do this right, this is, tie is gonna be a little bit larger than this. As you can see, when I go to the edges, I got a little bit of room to play with there. But anyway, this is the fun part on laying this out and trying to figure out what we're gonna do. So I have my seven by three blank and what I wanna do is find dead center on it. So I'm just gonna put my ruler right on top, correct? And I'm gonna take my pin here and we're just gonna make a line here in the center like so. And I'm gonna carry it all the way to the edge here because what I want to do, I'm gonna need to do actually, is find this center line in a second on the ends. So we just go like so and so. So we're all the way to the end on this. Now, I wanna find the center this way too. So what we're gonna do is we'll take this up here and you can see the ruler is zero centered, right? So I'm even all the way, make our line right there. So there's our center. So what we're gonna do first is we're going to drill a hole here, but I wanna take my awl and make a little bit of a mark so hopefully my drill bit will indent into here. Now, you can use a brad point drill bit, but the one I have is not, I couldn't find one that size in my bunch of junk that I keep around. So. I'm gonna use this regular drill bit end here. 
and you can kind of see behind my hand, it's a little rounded, it's got a point. But we're not gonna drill all the way through. We're just gonna make a little indentation here and then I'm gonna make a reference mark. So I'll bring this down and see if I can get that as close as I can on the center. Okay, that's good. Start her up. That's all I wanna do. Now what we're gonna do is go back to the table over here and I'm gonna get my compass back out. Well, I haven't got it back out, I haven't got, got to get it out. So, where, <laughs> get out of the way, Ty. There's a little indentation there. And you can see I'm gonna raise my pencil up to help myself out here. So there's that little indentation. So now when I make this mark, it's a perfectly centered circle, okay? That's kind of where I'm aiming for the knot and the tie. So I wanna make sure that's centered so when I put this on here, I'm gonna center this up on that and draw it. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and finish drilling this hole all the way through. I'm making a little cheat mark here where my line goes over the edge because that'll help me here. So what I wanna do is I wanna find the exact center right here. So I'm going to take my speed center two and I'm going to line this up right on dead center on that line and then see these numbers. I want to get the equal spacing on the numbers on either side. So you can see the board is just a little bit less than an inch wide. So I've got an equal bit of space right there. So it basically means it's centered. <laughs> so we'll go there. There we go there. And so now we found the center mark on the board here. So we'll just flip it around, do the same one again. It goes like, there's my cheat line. I'll bring these back to match. Cool. Okay, now we got our center lines marked. So what we want to do at this point is we want to transfer the bow tie over to the wood. And I'm going to use a Sharpie. Hopefully, ah, that one's gold. Ah, that one's black. <laughs> See if this one writes well. Oh, that's good. Okay. So I've made a little bitty dot just to kind of find the center on this. This is actually the spot where it's not so critical because really you're only gonna use one side of this pattern to, when you're turning. So I'm just eyeing this up. I've got an X mark like type thing there. I want to see if I can get these looking somewhat symmetrical. The cool thing is, is if your bow tie comes up, out looking a little bit odd that's great because it looks more handmade so here we go that looks pretty good so I'm just gonna take the sharpie here and yeah, mark on the wood nice bold line you want a nice wide line oops follow the curves Tim I, just, I couldn't do it when I was drawn can't do what I'm <laughs> I can't stay inside the lines and I can't stay outside the lines <laughs> uh, there we go so one more over here okay so we've got that nice bold tie on there now why is all this so important well when you look at my first tie that I made right here I'm beautifully centered right well I was a little bit sleepy and lazy when I made this one <laughs> look at the design it's off center so I've got a lot of edge here but very little edge there now that really is kind of a cool design if you want to do that I like that so it's not a bad thing but if it's perfectly centered, it makes it a lot easier to turn and to do the, some of the finished sanding. So the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go to the lathe. Okay, we're gonna take our tie and mount it between centers now. And I used an awl to put a little hole in there. So we'll just set that up like so. I'll bring in tailstock a little bit. I'm gonna wind this into that hole right there. Oops, missed it. Good Lord, there we go. Okay, I just wanna make sure that looks good. Okay, I'm gonna tighten it up a bit. If you're using really, uh, I don't wanna say cheap wood, but if you're using something like poplar or something that's a little splintery, you don't wanna put too much pressure because you could split the blank. Uh, this maple is really awesome, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm gonna turn this, I wanna make sure I'm not hitting anything in here because this is where it gets really good. We're gonna start turning this. So I've got my Googles. And you know, think about it. I'm gonna reach over here and I'm gonna get my face shield because the grain is running this way this is a board if I get a catch I can take a whole big chunk of this off and it could come right at my face 
So in the beginning, I'm gonna wear this till we get it towards more manageable. So it's on there. I'm going to grab a detail. No, it's, that's a regular, it's about a medium depth spindle gouge. You can see it's got enough of a curve in there. It looks pretty good. So anyway, let's start turning. And this is gonna be a really cool effect. You're gonna love this. There's your tie. <laughs> you can see the black outline spin in there. That's why we went to so much trouble to do that. So I'm gonna pick the speed up a bit because we're cutting air. When you're cutting air, you need speed so the tool doesn't drop into the voids. So we're gonna start over on this end and just whittle away the whittle a bit. cut you make, keep the tool handle in by your hip, and you just shift your weight from left to right, you have your foot out where you want to wind up, it gives you the balance, and you can see I'm just slowly bringing this in towards that black silhouette you see, this is so cool, so I'm going to take this down a little bit, so right about where my edge is, there we go, so we'll just start cutting in like so, following that curve. It is really neat because people ask me to plan things out and I say, no, the wood talks to me while I'm turning, so I just see the shape inside the wood. In this case, let me open that up a little bit, maybe you can hear me better. <laughs> this will still cover my face. So in that, in this case, I can actually see the shape in the wood because I drew it. Which I think is so cool. Okay, we're gonna come back here and it's like sneaking up on a bead. We wanna make the bead for this part of the bow. So we're just starting swinging. Once you have a nice sharp tool, you're good. If it's dull, go over and sharpen it real quick and then you get better cut. Now, on my bow tie, I like it to have a little bit of a curve on the pedals or on the bow part. I don't want, uh, the first one I did went in and it looked too much like a bow for a packet. So, uh, be very careful about this and try to get that shape in there. You can see I got rid of some of the black line, so I got to be careful I go any deeper than that. Because this is really um, slippery. It's not slippery, how to put it. It's sensitive. So if you put a little too much downward pressure, the tool really cuts aggressively because you're only cutting a piece of wood, a, like a board. So let's stop this and look at it real quick. Ah, pretty cool. So you can see my black lines. I'm following it really well. So we're going to just work our way on through this and get the shape cut out. And then we're going to remount this. So we got a ways to go before that though. So I'll come back here and start sneaking up on the bead from this side. There, repeat that, I'm gonna go from this side and sneak up on the bead. Okay, let's see how we're doing now. <laughs> Pretty cool. That is really neat. Now, you can see my old circle here I had here for the button. That was just extra large. <clears throat> Excuse me, I ate some maple there. Um, so I'm just trying to make this curve look like a circle here. So one thing that you can do is grab yourself whoop, something that has a circle size to it already. Center that thing up. That looks about right. You can draw yourself a line here and give yourself a good curve. So what I want to do probably is grab myself a Sharpie, Sharpie, Sharpie. There's a Sharpie. And do that again with a Sharpie. Because what I'm trying to build right here is, or give myself an idea of, is what this curve looks like right there. So just says I have to take a little bit. Eh, it looks pretty good. I think I'm where I need to be. Check, check, check. Let me look, look, look. Yeah, 
<laughs> Surprise me too. Okay, all I'm gonna do is narrow down these ends a little bit and then we're gonna flip it around and mount it a different way. Now we're gonna nip it on the bandsaw. Take the ends off. And I don't wanna cut right up against it because I'm gonna have to sand that edge a little bit. Because this is ingrain, so it's gonna be tougher to sand. Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lay Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners.